children are referred by the social work agencies. Yeah, but it's voluntary in a sense that you don't see fences. I mean, if the boys decide, listen, I've had enough of this place and walks out, <laughs> we call it abscons, and then they can. I had problems at home, like family problems and that. And then my social work got in contact with Rosen Boyson and then like they sent me there. I was 15. Once they are here, we try to keep them here by the way in which we engage with them so that they feel good about being here. It's a holistic program, so we work with them emotionally, psychologically, um, physically also. So we provide to the educational needs. There's a social worker on campus. We have a nurse also. There's a, there's a daily program also, and part of the program includes um, activities and then also teaching to social skills and education. In the afternoon, we have a study time where the youth are also assisted. At first I wasn't used to the routine, but then like after a while, like I got used to getting up early, having to go to school, doing my homework, which I didn't really do at home. We visit schools and we get the reports or the feedback from schools and there will be uh, learners will be identified, maybe struggling with, maybe for instance, like mathematics. And those learners will be like put in a special program where we will be assisted with math. We also do our exam analysis. It also assists us to have maybe extra tutors for boys who might need uh, uh, extra classes. They are woken up at half past five. Uh, they then have to prepare for school and each youth has got their own chores such as cleaning the common room or the bathroom. Breakfast is at quarter past six. Then the boys leave at about quarter to seven for school. They come home in the afternoon, lunch is at half past three. Then they have a half an hour structured free time, which is we all play soccer together. Four o'clock, we have a study time. During the prep session, staff members will be able to check their books because we also have to make sure that they also behave at school. Supper is at six o'clock. After six, we prepare for school the next day, so they would get their shirts and trousers for the next day. Youth must wash their own underclothes and socks, and then they will go into the cottages, and that's an opportunity for them and the youth care worker to just talk about the days. Devotions forms part of that also. We cater to all the religious needs of the boys and then um, if there are boys that still have schoolwork to do then they will complete that and at half past nine it's lights out. Weekends it is however a little bit relaxed. Some of our youth cannot go home or do not have a home to go to so we will arrange for camps where they need to go and sleep out there in a tent. Most of the boys were not even, you know, before join, uh, coming to Girls and Boys Town, were not even attending school. But with the programs that we have uh, and with the structure that we have, we managed to assist those boys. To the supporters of Girls and Boys Town, I'd just like to say thank you for giving our boys um, an opportunity to, to succeed in life and also to please keep on supporting uh, Girls and Boys Town. Support us to be part of change in the lives of vulnerable youth. You can conveniently and easily donate through SnapScan and through the GBT website on girlsandboystown.org.za.